We are going to have a kid's lesson. So if you're a kid, we invite you to come on up and you can sit in front of the steps of any age, kid of any age. Look at your husbands, look at your wives. Are they a kid? Mr. Chris Cass is going to lead us a little kid's lesson today. If you're getting baptized and you're a kid, come on up here, please. How are you guys doing today? Yeah. I didn't bring my notes. We're about to see how well I'm doing today. Who's getting baptized? Nice, nice. You guys ready to hop up here in the tub and wash all your sins off and earn your free spot into heaven? No? Good answer. If you said yes, we wouldn't let you get baptized. Because no, what you're doing up here, you're not going to wash your sins away. You're not going to earn a spot into heaven. This is not going to have any bearing at all as far as your salvation is concerned. So what's the big deal? Anybody nervous? It's okay if you are, because this actually is a really, really big deal. I remember when I got baptized. Actually, here's a picture. Not that picture. That picture. That's the baptismal tank I got baptized in as a kid back in the 1900s. <laughs> yeah. And I remember... I wasn't all that nervous, but right before we went out there, they said, hey, just so you know, the heater broke in the tank. <laughs> How bad could it be, right? It was bad. It was like they took a big block of ice and just melted it and let me get in there. And I was standing there shaking and shivering in front of everyone. Oh, it was so cold. But I knew that it wasn't going to wash my sins away. I knew that it wasn't going to earn my spot in heaven or have any effect on my salvation. And as far as I was concerned, it really didn't mean anything at all. And I lived my life like it didn't mean anything at all. I hung out with people I probably shouldn't have been hanging around with. I got involved with a lot of things that I should not have been involved in. And I did a lot of things that I just shouldn't have been doing. And it took me about 15 years, but I finally realized, you know what? What I did back up there, well, it's not there anymore, but what I did in that baptismal tank, that was actually supposed to mean something. And I decided I had to get baptized again. And this time it was going to mean something. And I did get baptized again. But really, what does it mean? Well, when you accept Christ as your Savior, if you do that, that's a personal thing between you and God, right? Nobody knows that but you and God, unless you tell people. And if you don't tell anybody, nobody really has any expectation at all that you should be living a Christ-like life. And at face value, that seems like a really easy way to live. Don't tell anybody, and you don't have to live up to anything. But I think God might throw some stumbling blocks on our path if we try to do that. Because I think we can all agree that we should be telling people. We should be sharing our faith. We should be sharing what Jesus did for us, right? So we start to tell people. We tell our family. We tell our friends. And whether we realize it, they start to watch us. And they watch to see, is this for real? Or is this just something they're saying because that's what they want people to hear? That happens. That's basically what I did back in the 1900s. Well, they look at you and say, is this for real, or is this just a phase that you're going through? And you're going to move on to something else real soon. That happens too. Or do they look at you and say, you know what? They are truly living a Christ-like life. This, is, this looks like it's the real deal. They are what they say they are. And what does it mean to live a Christ-like life? Well, the Gospels... Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're filled with stories about Jesus, things he did, things he said, things that we should want to do as followers of him to emulate what he was. I mean, we know that Jesus was loving, right? 
We know that he forgave people who wronged him. We know that he helped the poor, the sick, the hungry, the needy. And those are all things that we, if we claim to be followers of Christ, should be living out in our own lives. But of all the things in the gospel that Jesus did and Jesus said as an example for us, do you know what the first thing listed is? We hear in the gospels about Jesus' birth. We hear in some of the gospels about him getting left at the temple by his family and they had to go back and find him. But when Jesus became an adult and went out on his own to start his ministry, the very first thing we hear is that Jesus got baptized. In the four Gospels, we hear that in Matthew tells that story, Mark tells that story, Luke tells that story. And then in John chapter 1, John the Baptist kind of talks about what his experience was there. So Jesus' baptism is talked about in all four of the Gospels. Do you know how many of the Jesus stories are told in all four of the Gospels? Not many. So it's important enough, baptism and the example that Jesus set forth is important enough to be in all four of the Gospels. And it's so important that it's the very first example that Jesus gave to us. So as followers of Christ, I think it stands that if we claim to be following him, that should be at the top of the list. Baptism should be at the very top of the list of things that we should be doing to show that we are followers of Christ. And I know that if you're here getting baptized today, you have told people that you are a follower of Christ. But today, you're going to get up here and you're going to make that declaration in front of all these people. There's a few hundred people here today. But I'll go one further. There's a camera up there and we are live streaming this thing out on YouTube. You are essentially making that declaration in front of the entire planet. And you know what? People are going to watch you. People are going to watch to see, is this real? They're going to watch to see if you stumble. They're going to watch to see if you fall. And if we're being honest, there's going to be people who are hoping to watch you stumble and fall. Spoiler alert, you're going to stumble and fall. You're going to. But you, what are you, six kids here that are getting baptized today? You are in a really unique situation. You know, when I got baptized that second time, the time that I actually meant it, I got baptized with a lot of different people. You know who one of the people was that I got baptized with? I have no idea. I was curious if you guys knew. I don't know a single person that I got baptized with that day. But you six are in a really unique situation because you're all roughly the same age. You all go to the same church. You're all in Sunday school. A lot of you are in Awana together. Shameless plug for those visiting. Awana is our youth ministry for preschool to sixth grade. It meets on Wednesday nights. It's awesome. Get your kids there. Um, a lot of you are infused together. Another shameless plug. That's our youth group from 6th to 12th that meets on Sunday nights. Four of you, two-thirds of the kids that are getting baptized today, go to the same school. You see each other six days out of seven every single week. Three of you, half of you, are in the same class at school. You probably see each other over 40 hours a week. You guys are in a really unique situation because you are going to watch each other stumble and fall over and over and over and over and over again. And I don't tell you that to discourage you. I tell you that to challenge you. When you all see each other stumble and fall, my challenge to you is to lift each other up. Hold each other accountable. That's a hard one. Encourage each other. Pray for each other. Pray with each other. Whether you realize it or not, what's happening here today, the six of you have something really special together. Redeemer Church, family and friends that's here to watch these kids just today, I would encourage you to all do the same. Lift these kids up. Encourage them. Hold them accountable and pray for them because they're going to need it. Hey, Elijah. Being able to baptize you today is hands down one of the greatest experiences of my entire life. I'm so happy. It's like one of the highlights of my life. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of all six of you. Let's pray.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for these kids today. Thank you for their willingness to come up here and tell people that they are following you, to make that public literally to the entire planet. We just ask that you lift them up and help them to keep you at the center of their path and live the life that you would want them to live. In your name, amen.